you wanted the best, you've got the best podcast. The hottest, hottest. podcast in the, world. in the world. The Chris Voss Show, the preeminent podcast with guests so smart you may experience serious brain bleed. The CEOs, authors, thought leaders, visionaries, and motivators. Get ready, get ready. Strap yourself in. Keep your hands, arms, and legs inside the vehicle at all times. Because you're about to go on a monster education roller coaster with your brain. Now, here's your host, Chris Voss. Hi, folks. It's Voss here from thechrisvossshow.com. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the big show. We certainly appreciate having you. As always, the Chris Voss Show is a family that loves you, but doesn't judge you, at least not as harshly as your mother-in-law, because, you know, I don't know, you just got to get her on a good side. So invite her to come on the podcast and listen to it at goodreads.com, Fortress Chris Voss, LinkedIn.com, Fortress Chris Voss, Chris Voss, one of the TikTokity, and all those crazy places on the internet. Today, we have an amazing young man on the show with us today. Harley Green joins us. He's an entrepreneur, an investor, and a digital nomad. We're going to talk about what that means. We've had a few digital nomads on the show, and I've always been intrigued by it. I was uh, almost setting myself up to become one before COVID came around, but we'll get into it. Harley is a seasoned real estate investor, entrepreneur, and former software architect who knows firsthand the struggles of juggling multiple business demands while striving for growth and success. After earning his master's degree in computer science from the University of California, he embarked on a career in the defense industry where he led cutting-edge projects in signal processing and machine learning. Then in 2011, him and his wife moved to North Virginia, where they started a homestead and began their real estate journey, renting out their basement. Over the next nine years, they expanded their portfolio, including turnkey condos and navigating the complexities of real estate investing. Then they relocated in 2020 to Chattanooga, Tennessee, to tap into burgeoning real estate market and improve their quality of life for their family of five. We'll get into the rest of what they've been up to. Welcome to the show, Harley. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks, Chris. There you go. Thank you. Give us the dot coms. Where do you want people to find you on the interwebs? Yeah. So the best place to connect with me is workergenics.com. I've got all my contact information there. Love networking and with people sharing my knowledge. There you go. So give us a 30,000 overview of what you do, how you do it. I believe you're involved with your company, Worker, Gen X, et cetera. Yeah. So my primary focus right now is Worker Genics. It's a virtual staffing business. That's the premier virtual staffing agency out there right now, helping business owners 10x their business by delegating to incredibly you know, dedicated, smart, professional people that just happen to live in countries in the world with a lower cost of living. So we're able to have huge savings on our business overhead costs. I also mm -hmm. focus a lot on real estate investing and helping burgeoning real estate investors have success by partnering with them as a capital partner as well as maintaining our own portfolio that's a mix of single family homes, multifamily and commercial properties. There you go. What is, what is, what, what, what is your main focus today to tell people about here on the show? Yeah, a couple of things, you know, I'd really love to share with people just kind of how to get into real estate investing, mm -hmm. how to treat it like a business so mm -hmm. that you don't fall into the common mistakes a lot of investors do when they're seeking that kind of financial freedom to quit their day job and switch over to real estate investing, they really just kind of trade one day job for another one and don't realize the amazing freedom benefits that real estate investing can offer. And mm -hmm. then talk about how as a business owner or real estate professional, you can leverage virtual assistance in your business to set it up. So number one, you have more free time to enjoy your life. You have a prof more profitable business and your business value increases. We've successfully developed and sold businesses that had all the backend operations done by virtual assistants and we got a better multiplier because we were taken out of it and we were using <clears throat> low cost support. Wow. Running all all back in virtual assistants. I need to do that. I need to have I need to have virtual assistants and everything. We'll put a virtual assistant around the show. I don't think it'd be as funny as interesting though. <laughs> Without me it's not much. So this is pretty interesting. Tell us about you, how you grew up and uh, got down this pathway in your words. Yeah. So I didn't really have a background growing up in entrepreneurship or investing outside of just, you know, sock away some percent of your W-2 income and put it in index funds in the 401k. That was kind of all my knowledge. And mm -hmm. it got to the point in, I would say, you know, around like 2011, my wife and I were really looking at our balance sheet and it's like, Pretty much all of our net worth was in index funds, just you know, kind of from our retirement accounts, a little bit in brokerage. And we were like, what would happen if there was a big stock market correction? It, it could be pretty detrimental to us. 
And so we're like, what, what are some options for diversifying? And we started researching online, talking to some of my coworkers at the time, I was a computer engineer, and many of them had some investment properties. And the way they had done it was, you know, when you move on, get a new home, your family grows, you get a bigger house, rather than selling your previous residence, just hold on to it and rent it. And that had, many of them had done very well by doing that. And so yeah. that's kind of where we got the idea initially. And we just started out renting out our basement. We had a house that was a little bigger than we needed. Yeah. We were running a homestead there. And so we had a lot of acreage and space. And yeah. we're like, you know, this is kind of a, an easy ask to just rent out our basement and see how it goes. And it just snowballed and was amazing. There you go. And then you parlayed it into more properties. What got you to the point where you started doing, where you started doing nomad stuff? Yeah. So in 2022, we started WorkerGenix, the virtual staffing business, after I successfully walked away from my career as a computer engineer because of the passive income we had built up from real estate and the real estate team that my wife was running. Mm -hmm. And in late 2023, we decided, you know what, let's see about traveling. Like, We've been wanting to travel full time for a while. We really love traveling. We do a lot of, I mean, in, even in 2023, before being nomads officially, we were probably on the road traveling over 10% of the year. Wow. And so we were like, what's kind of limiting us and keeping us from just taking the plunge and doing it? The first thing was my wife still had a real estate team and that's a very localized type business. Yeah. And that was kind of holding us in, in that particular area in Chattanooga, Tennessee. And then our kids mm -hmm. being in their schools, right? So they were in private schools and they enjoyed them. We originally were like, you know, let's, let's let them get a little bit older before we pull them out. It'll be easier to teach them if they're a little bit older. And, you know, it just was to the point where these are limiting beliefs. These are things that have solvable problems. There's, there's solutions to these things. And so my wife actually used to teach high school math. So she has a background in education oh, okay. there you go. and so we just looked into homeschooling. We went ahead and got my wife's real estate team sold. It got a really great multiple of value again because of having the virtual assistants on the back end. So that check, you know, that one thing holding us back is gone. The next was the children's education. So before we started doing the international travels, we went ahead and pulled the kids out over Christmas break last year and started doing the homeschool with them. So while we were still had a home base and all the conveniences of our network. We got used to that routine of homeschooling them and it was going very well. So wow. then in May, we started doing the full-time digital nomad lifestyle and ended up in Cartagena, Colombia. Wow. We spent some time there before coming down to Medellin, Colombia, where we are now. There you go. So uh, pretty wild. You're able to travel the world now and everything else. I mean, that's got to be fun. Is it a bit of a challenge to take the kids with you on travel and stuff? Yeah, so there's highs and lows, like with everything. But, you know, one thing that has been great actually is how integrated we were able to be as a family doing this travel. So we all kind of work together in their businesses and investments, and the kids are here alongside. They're learning from us, and then we have a lot more free time because we're traveling and we don't have the nine to five type job schedule where the kids' homeschool can basically get wrapped up by noon every day with their yeah. curriculum, and then we're able to go spend our afternoons out exploring the whatever area we're in, going to the local museums, going to the parks, meeting up with other expats that are digital nomads. And it's, you know, building their, having really enriching experiences as a family. That is freaking wild. That is wild. I, I would have loved to do that as a kid because I hated school too. Plus there's so much in school they teach you that you don't really need to have. It's like, they, they teach you like all this stuff and you're just like, man, do I really need to know all this? And so yeah. much of my school is wasted. I, mean, I tell people the most important class I, I had in school was typing. It taught me to type. <laughs> you know, I knew how to do whatever it's called, the, the, the typewriter key. And my, my business partner, he would always be pecking out these letters, you know, one thing at a time because he never learned typing. And I'm like, that was the most important class I learned in school was typing. Critical um, life skills. There you go. So now with your company that you guys have, Worker Gen X, what are some of the services you offer over there? Yeah. So a lot of entrepreneurs, when they get started, you know, they're doing everything kind of by a bootstrap. They're, mm -hmm. they're the CEO. They're also the assistant. They're the bookkeeper. They're the marketer. They're the salesperson. They're doing all these different things. You get mm -hmm. to a certain point where you, ha you hit a limit. There's only so many hours in the day. There's only so many hours in a week that you can work. And if you want to grow your business beyond that, you got to start delegating to people. And yeah. the most cost effective way to do that is with virtual assistants. Mm. And so things that are really common for them to take over, I always recommend for entrepreneurs to start with an executive assistant. 
This is someone who kind of has the soft skills that's going to just be a problem solver, wanting to take on new things and just kind of be an extension of yourself. So you can start handing off things like your email management, your appointment setting, handling, updating your website, doing some of your marketing, your newsletter. One of the great things that we've found with our virtual assistants in the Philippines is that many of them have these like combo skills that are unique that you can't typically find with the US labor market. So you can find someone who will come in as an executive assistant that has a strong finance and bookkeeping background and mm -hmm. also has self-taught things like marketing and social media management so they can have that hybrid role and be extremely well, cost effective. Yeah, you can use them for all the different hats or you know some of the hats. There you go. And they're not just that it's not my department. So there you go. And I mean, I've, we've had several people that come on the show that, that run their, or the, these organizations from the Philippines and they run the, the people there. It's quite extraordinary, you know, what you can do when you really think about, you know, what, what it costs to hire people nowadays, you know, prices of everything are going up, labor, lawsuits, paperwork, taxes. I mean, it's quite extraordinary. And being able to put off a lot of this stuff to people to help you. It just can make all the difference in the time and use that you're doing. Oh, it's crazy. We have people come to us and they're like, you know, I thought I wanted to like, you know, really support the local market. And I, I tried hiring someone. I gave them, you know, $20 an hour. They're asking salary. And then I got hit with 10%, you know, payroll tax on top of that. Yep. And, they, and the person doesn't even show up to work half the time. They're really not motivated. <laughs> and uh, it's like, they only will do exactly what I hired them to do. Anything outside of that, they give me a lot of attitude mm -hmm. and it's rough versus, yeah. you know, with people in the Philippines, their cost of living is so low, like a surgeon there who works for the government, a really good job. Mm -hmm. Their average salary is only 13 grand a year. What? And yeah. So we can pull mm -hmm. highly skilled, highly educated people to come do roles like being an executive wow. assistant or a bookkeeper. We're getting engineers. We're getting people with master's degrees in health coming to support our clients for less than 20 grand a year to be full-time dedicated executive assistants. Wow. You can't find that here, man. That's crazy. And, and I hate to crack on any certain generation, but there's certain generations that evidently people are really struggling to work with. And I'm sure it's not everybody in those generations, but it seems to be kind of a pattern of, of people that, you know, I was talking with a friend of mine who who today who she went out to lunch at, at some restaurant and it, it was drive through she was at the drive through and she just asked them to, to cut her sandwiches in half and, and this was after they'd handed the food back over and they refused to do it they're like yeah we can't do it we'd have to do it before you ordered and she's like did it before i ordered and wow. they just the, the lack of they finally had to remake all the food cutting it before they ordered because they didn't follow through and you're just like can you just cut the damn food? Seriously, is someone going to die here that we don't know? About? You know, it's just the attitude that she got from people that just don't care, don't want to, they don't want to do the extra work. I've seen that yeah. some of the engagements we do in business where we all, we'll have a manager who's just, I just don't want to do the extra work. And you're just like, wow, man, it must be great to, to, you know, not give a shit. I'm glad you can get away with that in your life. And of course, you know, they're usually paid in direct accordance to it. But uh, I'm looking at some of the packages you have on your guys' website. Tell me about how these work or services. Yeah, we find pe the most successful people are when they realize that they really need to delegate at least 40 hours a week. So that's really mm -hmm. what we focus on right now is getting people a full-time dedicated virtual assistant without mm -hmm. any of the headache typically associated with finding help. And so for a flat monthly subscription of 1979 a month, you get 40 hours a week of someone who's 100% committed to you. And that includes no startup fees. So you don't have to have any kind of outlay or risk getting started. There's no service contract. So it's just month to month. If you're like, hey, you know what? After a few months, I just really prefer the mediocre local help that I've been used to. Just cancel at any time. You can go back to the old way of doing things. And it, we just take all the headache out of it. So we'll make the job descriptions. We'll do all the interviewing and screening. And if something doesn't work out, we also offer free replacements. Oh, wow. So the replacement of the, of the person. You know, that's the other problem you have. Like you, I think you mentioned when you hire people, you know, you got to give them like three warnings or whatever the hell it is. And you got to, you got to deal with all that sort of stuff. The sexual harassment issues in workplaces now are off the chain, especially yeah. in big companies. I think if you're below 25 employees, so certain things don't apply to you, but you still have to, 
you know, you can be sued for anything nowadays. I've had employees sue us over the years and shake down lawsuits. We've sued mm-hmm. employees who stole from us or owed us money. You know, the, the gambit of, of stuff that could go wrong and where you can just more easily disconnect those people that are working in the Philippines. I mean, I don't think you want to do it to be mean, but, you know, if they're not doing their job, you can just say, okay, we're done, you know. And workman's comp, I think, is another big issue, you know, yeah. right? So you got workman's comp, you got usually state tax, you got to pay whatever the income tax is for them. You got the federal income tax for employees. You got to do all the withholding, you got to do all the books. A lot of people don't realize how much that taxation goes into it. Oh, it's crazy. And, you know, with this, you don't have to worry about any of that. There's no 1099s. In fact, you can pay their salary on your business credit card so you can get those travel points to help, be, you know, live out your digital nomad dreams. We're fired, everybody here at the office, damn it. I'm getting travel points, and that works great for you because you're you're traveling your worse. So there you go. That's <laughs> hilarious. I didn't even think of that, but uh, yeah, it's a great way. So, how much productivity when you work with companies and and people that are entrepreneurs? How much productivity do you see? Is there a number that you usually see, or, or some sort of results you usually see in productivity that can scale based upon using an executive assistant or assistants? Yeah. So based on the feedback we've gotten from our clients, it's been huge. A lot of times in the past, they'll start with someone part-time with us. And we're kind of phasing that out now because we've seen the success of people staying full-time. And they will have such great experience with that assistant that they'll move them to full-time because they've seen such great results. And you know, it can be simple things like we had a financial service client who was really bogged down when they were getting new clients. There's a huge amount of paperwork and digital files that need to get uploaded for getting all set up for taking care of the books and all the past year's tax documents and receipts and stuff so that they can get everything in their system to do the financial analysis and tax analysis to really help them. Mm-hmm. And that was taking days of time for the client that was taking them away from doing the high value activity of getting new clients mm-hmm. and doing the specific analysis. So they got an executive assistant through us who has a background in finance and bookkeeping, who does all that file organization, the new client onboarding, and then also takes over all the daily bookkeeping for those clients so that our client, the business owner, now can spend their time focusing on what they do best and what's the most profitable in their business. Yeah, definitely. I noticed there's these bonus things on your offering on your services page for the thing. Tell us about what those are, what they mean. Yeah. So we just want to make it super easy for people to get started. So we provide all the resources you need. We went through the struggles ourselves personally, working with virtual assistants on our own when we got started with like our real estate team and managing our investments. And we kind of learned the hard way what the things not to do and where the pain points are. And you know, we've addressed all that by providing these guarantees and bonuses. So we provide all the IT infrastructure. They come fully ready to work. You don't have to get computers or phones for them. Ah. We give them a virtual phone number so they can make and receive calls and text messages with your local area code. Really? They're going to get, yeah. So it's great because like they can, we've had a lot of people who were working with our business, like our real estate team, they would call after a transaction and say, hey, I want to send your assistant a gift. They were so nice to work with, kind of holding our hands through the process. Uh, Where should I address the package to? And we're like, they don't work in the office here with us. They're in the Philippines. So if you kind of tell us what you want to get, we'll take care of it. And they were shocked. They're like, I had no idea. Like they're calling from a local area code. They sound, you know, their English is perfect. And so that was like a real testament to the power of this leverage and using these people. And so I like how you you I like how that's set up. You know, you've you've gone through and you've 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 learned done all the learning of of because some people think it's just easy where you're, oh you just go hire somebody and everything's fine, but you have to vet these folks. I mean, they're just like any other employee, right? That's right. And so one of the things we do, we have a over a hundred point rubric that we grade all of our candidates on. Wow. We also require a federal background check. So the wow. highest level background check that the Philippines offers, they have to submit that along with their application to be considered for work. I probably wouldn't even be able to work for you as a virtual assistant. I don't yeah. deal with others. That's half my problem. No one gets along yeah. with me. Maybe that's it. I don't know. It's one of those two. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, 100 point. Man, I this is, well, this is the reason I work for myself. I'm one of those people that shows up and they go, what's your resume? I don't know. I've been working for myself since 18. Exactly. And they're just like, yeah, we'll we'll take a hard pass on you. And I'm just like, you're <laughs> flipping burgers at McDonald's. Anyway, I wonder if McDonald's would hire me. I should take a camera and just go in for shits and giggles and see if I can get a, a low a low skill 
entry level job. I mean, I used to work at McDonald's when I was sixteen. But, yeah, uh, undercover boss style there. Yeah, I could go back and I don't know, see if the same people are working there. I don't know. The guy who fired me, the stories in my book, of course. I know she offers several guarantees here. There's the happy moon, the happy honeymoon guarantee. I could have used that for my ten marriages. <laughs> the gold crusher. And the ghostess guarantee, which I find interesting. Tell us about those. Yeah, so those basically make it so, you know, if there is something that goes wrong, you're not happy with the match, we'll replace them for free. And then, you know, when you have that great person, you're working with them. And if you're not hitting those goals that you wanted to achieve when you first talked to us during that discovery call, Mm -hmm. we will give you a free month of service and one-on-one coaching with me because I'm so confident in how this works. I've seen it work successfully in our lives and in many of our clients' lives. And so I know how to help people be successful setting their businesses with their systems and their people up to operate effectively. And then again, if you're just kind of overworking with people virtually, you want to go back to doing it all yourself, you can ghost us. Cancel at any time. There's no long-term contract. Wow. Oh, I love that term. I mean, I date a lot. Yeah, there's a lot of ghosting and dating. From both sides, it's it's kind of funny how it works. What haven't we talked about or about what you guys do there at WorkerGenics? A lot of people are concerned that hey, you know, I just can't afford getting help yet, right? We get that all the time, mm. and the reason people can't afford to get help is because they're not delegating yet. They are completely limited by doing everything mm. themselves. And I like to think, you know, I'm a numbers guy. I'm an engineer by background. You know, if you want to make, let's say. 100k a year net profit in your business you need to be and you want to take two weeks off to go to the beach and work 40 hours a week you know these are the assumptions here you need to be doing for 40 hours a week 50 weeks a year tasks that are worth 50 dollars an hour right Uh to make that 100k that's just Mm -hmm. the math Mm -hmm. so if you find yourself doing tasks that can be delegated to someone else for 12 to 15 dollars an hour like your bookkeeping your call follow-up running your crm your newsletter your marketing you're basically making it so you have to work extra hard extra hours on those other 50 dollars an hour tasks to be able to hit your goals and that's why you don't have the money to afford help because you aren't delegating yet yeah delegation is so important isn't it i mean let's talk about that why you know, it, it, it's so hard for an entrepreneur to learn to delegate. I think I still have problems after 35 years of being in business where I'm like, no, I can do that better and I can do it quick. Pew, pew, pew. And and yet, you know, then I get mucked down or I get mucking about, you know, ADHD is, is probably the one. Can I hire a virtual assistant to handle my ADHD? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's what I need. I need somebody yeah. to stand here, and when I'm on the computer, they're like, no, 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 don't open that email, Chris. That's just, don't open TikTok. Put the TikTok no. down. Don't don't start scrolling on TikTok, you know. That's what I need. I need, and they, yeah. they just stand there with one of those, I don't know, something that the Catholic... Little buzzer or something. Hit you or something. Yeah, just a shock or thing. And it's, I, that's definitely what I need. I probably do need shock therapy for my ADHD. But yeah. what, what are some of your thoughts on how entrepreneurs can overcome... You know, procrastinating and, and, and putting off stuff and not delegating to the right people, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So what we have found works really well is to apply the 80-20 rule, the Pareto principle. So let's say you've got a 100-minute task that has to happen every week. You know, maybe it's mm-hmm. like making your newsletter or updating your social media or replying to client emails. Mm-hmm. If you invest 20% of that time up front with a virtual assistant, setting them up for success by outlining the task. Maybe that could be recording you doing it once, you know, do the Zoom, record your screen, just talk through how you do it, and then hand off the outline or that video to the assistant. They can use AI tools, which we didn't even have when we got started. So this is even more powerful to automatically get a transcript of the video, plug it into ChatGPT, create a procedure that's 90%, and then they can walk through the video with that created procedure from AI, clean it up, make it all nice, and now they can handle that task for you. So then week two, you've put 20 minutes on the week one, week two, they're doing like 90 minutes and you're just doing 10 minutes of review and feedback. Week three, they're doing all 100 minutes. So now one of the objections we get all the time is I don't have time to train someone. What well, do you just mm. got in three weeks, 100 minutes back? Yeah. By only investing 20 minutes the week one and then 10 minutes week two. So that seems like yeah. a pretty good return on investment to me and really motivate someone to be like, okay, man, if I could free up 100 minutes just with one task, the sky's the limit on everything else. So I like to challenge myself and our clients 
think of one thing a week that you're doing that mm -hmm. you could hand off to somebody else. Because honestly, let's be real. How many things do we do in our daily business that like we are the only person in the world who could do it? It's pretty much my microphone and me. Well, I mean, not the only person in the world, I suppose. There's other people that can do podcasts, but not as good as me. The Yeah, I mean, it's definitely it's definitely something where entrepreneurs need to learn to do this. And I noticed your website. I was pulling it up, and we had some music come up from your your website. Uh, I think there's a book or a, an ebook or something that you have. I already signed up for it, so I took it away, where you can you – can, it's a questionnaire, I think, or something for – how to know if you need to delegate more, I think it is. Yeah, so we've got this free guide on our website. It's called Delegate or Die. And it has <laughs> over 100. It it's a checklist. So it's really yeah, easy. Like, like it's got over 100 different things that our clients have successfully delegated to their virtual assistants. And so you can just download that and it goes and go through and be like, hey, am I doing this? Am I doing this? Am I doing this? And then when you come and talk to me, we can talk through that and create an ideal role description of someone that can take at the biggest pain points of those off your plate. There you go. Delegate or die. I loved it when I saw it. 100 tasks to delegate that will take your business to the next level. Great free checklist people can get on finding out how to how to be better with their business. Yeah, that's the biggest, one of the biggest mistakes I think entrepreneurs make is they don't delegate. They just, especially early on, and they, there just is a point you have to scale and you have to start turning stuff over. But then I, you know, I wish they'd had these virtual assistants things back in the day of my brick and mortar days. You know, we always had to have offices filled with some assholes and alligators, including me. And, <laughs> you know, it's expensive. It's expensive. Yeah. And you got to have, you got to have an HR department and you got to have a, you know, our, our manual and rules and regulations of what you can be fired or written up for. You just kept getting thicker every other day. <laughs> Add some more pages. Yeah. What did, what did the guy employ do? Add some more pages. And after a while, mm -hmm. it was like, people were like, your contract's a little out of control. And I'm like, yeah, we've had a few out of control. But hiring, delegating, that's something entrepreneurs need to know. So how can people onboard with you or find out if it's a good fit? Yeah, so if they go to workergenics.com, we've got links on every section to schedule a free, no obligation discovery call. We'll just talk through what your business is doing right now, talk about some of the pain points where you're spending your time. And then we can see if it's a good fit. We can typically, it takes about two to three weeks from when someone says, hey, let's move forward for us to do that full talent search. We do internal onboarding and vetting to really eliminate all the possible risks because we've been there and done that. We want to make sure our clients have a concierge like experience and get the best people from day one. I like that. Go right to the, go right to go, don't pass, whatever, and all that good stuff. Get your website music coming up there as I'm wandering around it. There you go. Give people uh, the final pitch out as we go out on, on onboarding with you guys what, in what you do and then uh, dot coms. Yeah. You know, one thing to keep in mind is when you've got a business, you want to create that you're doing this for a reason, to create a legacy for your family. And when you're doing everything in it, the value is not there because someone who's going to buy it from you, they're going to have to replace you. So if you can delegate to virtual assistants as much as possible to get yourself out of the business, except for the very special things that you do best, your business value multiple goes through the roof. So if you want to have a legacy created for your family, have more free time and have the freedom to travel the world like we're doing, you can go to workergenx.com, schedule a free discovery call with me, and we'll help get, the, get you on the right track with a virtual assistant. There you go. Well, thank you very much for coming on the show. We really appreciate it. It's been very insightful. Now you're, I'm going to fire everybody here at the office and uh, assistance. So thank you very much, Harley. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it, go. Chris. And I, I, I need to go live the digital nomad life now that we got that whole COVID thing out of out of the way. That that was I was I was this close to buying one of those Mercedes, you know, the Land Rover things. Yeah. And we made all this money doing shows where we take the podcast on the road. We interview CEOs and, and people at like C, at the CS show, NAB show, you know, all these shows around the nation. So I'd, I'd fly to them all the time. I always had to put my two dogs into, into uh, you know, doggy daycare. And then I was yeah. always rushing there, rushing back, and it would drive me nuts. And I'm like, you know, it'd be great if I could have one of those one of those vans where I could take the dogs with me. And we could take two weeks driving to South by Southwest, take my time, just wander, pull over and nap because I'm old. And then the dogs can stay in doggy daycare during the day when I'm at the event. And they can stay with me in the van at night. And, you know, and I'll save a bunch of money on stuff. And I, I'm like, you yeah, know, just be a nice little adventure. But then COVID, 
turn all that upside yeah. down. But I'd love to go do that again. You know, I've often talked about shooting stuff, and the podcast is mobile, so you know we can do it That's anywhere right. as long as, as long as we got some Wi-Fi. So might as well. What the hell? It's all on computers. I love how your kids are doing their online learning with computers. You know, what what's the name of that academy? The Kalade Academy or something? Yeah, there's several. We use Me Academy. Uh, yeah, it's been yeah. great. They've got amazing support, and it just makes it really easy to keep the, kid, the kids, you know, up with their homeschool and their education while we travel. I would. If loved. you want to take the podcast on the road, we're going to be in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico, in a few months. Oh, there come you down, go. Come do down the podcast some, on the beach. I'll get some tacos. There you go, and some beer, cheap beer or something. One of my friends kept trying to retire in Mexico, and I'm like, why do you keep doing that? He goes, Chris, the, the beer is 10 cents. Now, this is 20, yeah. 30 years ago, so I don't know if it's still 10 cents. But he's like, beer is 10 cents. I'm like, well, I mean, priorities. <laughs> yeah, no, the cost of living is so cheap. But here in Colombia, it's probably a third or a fifth what it is even in, like, Tennessee. So Crazy. you can live like a king down here. Yeah, that's probably where we're going to end up one of these days with the health. I Thank God my health is up. So thank you very much, Harley, for coming on the show. Thanks, for audience, for tuning in. Go to Goodreads.com, Fortress Chris Foss, LinkedIn.com, Fortress Chris Foss. Chris Foss won the TikTokity and all those crazy places on the internet. Thanks for tuning in. Be good to each other. Stay safe. We'll see you next time. And that should have a